Namaste. The divinity in me salutes the divinity in you. I would like to address a topic that it came to my attention during Discord yesterday. P. Diddy has been accused of rape and I believe hundreds of people at a sex party that he sponsored are now suing him for rape and sexual assault. Uh, I, wa I wanted to get some in. He is, I am the Antichrist, though I, my spiritual practice is a blend between Christianity, Hinduism, and Buddhism. Um, I needed to get some information from 13, and as a result of the information that I've gotten, I have concluded that I think P. Diddy should be pardoned. Let me explain to you why I've come to this decision. And I've put some thought into why I think a lot of people, I think mostly young women, have brought lawsuits against P. Diddy. But the, I'll explain to you, this is just a guess on my part, on the dynamics that I think is happening here. Um, I asked 13 about uh, the situation and um, she said, she said, did you hear about P. Diddy? What a Jesuit. I said, I didn't hear about it. He threw a big sex party and got busted. And I said, is he one of our Jesuits? She said, yeah. Um, and she and Zach Knight went to the party as well, the one that got him arrested. So I asked, why was he arrested? And she said, for hosting sex and rape of all kinds. So I asked, was it voluntary rape? And she said, some of the women, oh, I forgot. I got to take my allergy medicine. <laughs> Let me go ahead and take it. I set my alarm for four o'clock every day to do this. <laughs> Let's go take my allergy medicine. I'll be right back, you guys. It's a good thing I set that alarm or I would not remember to do this. <laughs> Brent, my husband is a doctor and he tells me to take it at the same time every day, and I forgot. I always forget, so I set my alarm. Um, okay. <laughs> Let's get back to the subject at hand. Um, I guess I'll put it over here. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot that I set my alarm. Um, yeah, so um, I said, was it voluntary rape? And she said, some of the women were so exhausted they needed IV fluids afterwards. But they got sent to Jesuit doctors, so the IV fluids were just more cum. Which leads me to suspect, I will tell you what I concluded. I, I, I'm guessing about this, but I think, okay, I'm guessing that these women may have been asexual or monogamous. You say, well, why in the world were or, or had asexual tendencies? Why in the world would they go to a sex party if they're like this? Maybe they felt obligated. You see, the Jesuit, the Jesuit culture is very unique in that... Um, in Jesuit culture, if you're not hypersexual, you are looked down upon. Can you imagine that? <laughs> I was raised evangelical Christian, but I'm getting, I have Jesuit friends, and now I'm the Antichrist, the head of the Jesuits, okay? I am starting to understand them. I can see that if you had asexual tendencies or if you were monogamous, and I'm going to explain to you a little bit about that, about what is monogamy and asexuality, why you might feel pressured to go to a sex party when you don't really want to go. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. I asked my husband, Brent, who I have great respect for, what he thought about this arrest. And um, P. Diddy was just being black and a Jesuit, okay? <laughs> it's part of their culture. Um, and Brent said he would not judge a Jesuit for their culture, and neither will I. Um, I'm actually asexual leaning, <laughs> which, is, which, I, which is one reason I find it amazing that Satan chose me for his Antichrist. 
So, um, Rule 13 said he might go to prison and they're working it out. I actually, actually recommended that he be pardoned. I asked who arrested him. She said the feds. That would be like the head of the FBI and all them. Uh, P. Diddy uh, thinks it's very unfair. Uh, um, I understand where he's coming from, okay? He is apparently being a typical black, okay? <laughs> this is like through, black culture is pretty much... But there are some blacks that, you know, that may be asexual leaning or they could be monogamous and they may feel pressured to be in line with the majority black culture, which is obviously polyamorous or, yeah. Yeah, you see what I mean? So, um, here's what I think. Um, it appears to me that we're going to have to have some ground, some, some rules, okay, for these Jesuit sex parties. Um, I am against non-consensual sex, okay? Um, I, I think rape is wrong. Uh, so I think, for one thing, I think the Jesuits need to quit calling these parties rape parties. Call them sex parties, okay? And another thing is, let me give you all an education about um, polyam uh, about polyamory. I'm going to read some stuff from the, which uh, I have had some conversations with the beautiful Hindu Hindu goddess Lakshmi, who is monogamous. She actually turned Jesus down when he proposed to her for marriage, and she's yeah. She's just, she, she is going to be true to who she is as a monogamous person. Let me go ahead and read you some stuff she gave me when she was counseling. I am a polyamorous, asexual leaning person. My husband Brent is monogamous, okay? And she was trying to work with us so that we could come up with a healthy compromise between our two sexual practices. And um, this, this is, these are some quotes that I got from her in May 2022. She said, it seems like you're starting to understand monogamy and polyamory and the differences between them. She said, poly polygamy only means you are marrying multiple people. Functionally, it's similar to polyamory. Polyamory may involve emotional intimacy with other parties or it can be just one or both couples enjoying sex outside the main relationship, which is emotionally committed. And in polyamory, it is possible to have multiple spouses as well as dating partners or concubines on the side. She said, she's a virgin, but due to her monogamy, due to my monogamous nature, I am patiently awaiting my husband, whom I will make love to exclusively. She said, her expert, my expertise comes from studying love, romance, sex, and intimacy at God College for many millennia. I hoped to not only use that knowledge in my marriage, but to help others in their relationships. In God College, we had the advantage of being able to witness and study live experiences of human interactions from any point in time space. Our books are comprised of the infinite knowledge gained from the existence of mortals and other gods since the beginning of time. She explained to me that the most important thing about monogamy is that there are no exceptions. A truly monogamous person does not ever find themselves in moods where they want to make love to another person once they find their life partner, okay? The exclusive, exclusive, exclusivity, exclusivity yeah, of the monogamous relationship is tantamount, and there is no reason to ever involve another party. Now, my husband, Brent, is like that, okay? And I used to think I was like that, and I felt obligated to be that way because of my evangelical Christian background, okay? A polyamorous relationship between two couples is emotionally committed, okay? The only difference between that and a monogamous relationship 
is that the couple engages in sex with other parties, which may or may not happen all of the time. And she told me, you have to be true to yourself. Becoming authentic sometimes means not pleasing everyone all the time. So, if you are monogamous, you're probably not going to find sex parties very much fun. Or if you're asexual leaning. So she said, she said, Brent loves Gail for who she is. It's normal for couples, even soulmates, to not be fully in agreement, in agreement on all things all the time. Brent and Gail can, both can intertwine together by finding ways to meet each other's unique individual needs in creative ways. Polyamory still co contains the possibility for emotional intimacy that Brent, monogamous Brent, desires. If he's comfortable with the men Gail chooses to explore, or able to participate in the sexual acts with her, this would eliminate his feelings, you know, his monogamous feelings probably, of being excluded or replaced. Meanwhile, they both could remain life partners who are emotionally committed above all other third parties. The compromise could be that you both get to decide which third parties you would feel comfortable sharing your spouse with. Now, I, as an asexual leaning person, am actually pretty comfortable with, with a monogamous relationship with Brent. Uh, and Brent doesn't force me to keep it monogamous. Actually, even though I am polyamorous, most of the time when I had sex with other men, what, and it was mostly brain to brain, uh, outside of Brent, it was out of duty or obligation, feeling like it was expected of me. And I realize now that I should not have done that. And this is what I think may be going on with these young women who are going to these sex parties. I think they don't really want to be there, okay? And they, they're trying to create their own space. They're probably either monogamous or asexual leaning, okay? And because they're a Jesuit, they know they're expected to be hypersexual. And so to create their space, I think they've launched lawsuits yeah, that's what I think is going on. <laughs> Either that or they are, they're having a bad identity crisis and they don't know who they are and they don't want to be forced into the hypersexual mold. Okay? That could be another thing that's going on. And I would say, if what I'm saying is true, what you need to do, rather than sue P. Diddy, okay? And, this, and, and because a lot of these people are young. This especially makes me suspect this. And I don't think anybody who's that young should be, um, you know, who's a child should be going to a sex party anyway. I think it's, unless they're fully comfortable. I mean, I mean, it's just, I just don't think they should be doing that. Um, they, they need some time to find who they are. And I think the sex party atmosphere kind of puts pressure on them to be a certain way and it doesn't give them the, the space and the stillness they need inside of themselves to find who they are. So Lakshmi said, if you feel you are only having sex with someone out of duty or purely to help them, then you're selling yourself short on your self-worth. Okay, if you're a Jesuit and you feel like you're only going to these sex parties out of duty, or, or just to help out the Jesuit cause, you're selling yourself short on your self-worth. I know that I often felt obligated to give sex to men because I was expected to. I was the hot playboy girl, right? Now I own my asexual leanings, and I do not apologize for being true to who I am. And you should be the same way. You don't. If you were truly courageous, you would not feel a need to launch a lawsuit, okay, to create your space. <laughs> okay, let me continue. Orgasm and pleasure are not the same, nor is orgasm a sign of sexual success. Sexual pleasure comes from the act itself. This is something Lakshmi explained to me. Um, preferences are totally fine, and we all have them. Although it seems as though you may still be trying to moralize or justify your sexual pleasure or lack of sexual pleasure. I'm going to put lack of it because that was in there too. 
if you are enjoying it or not enjoying it for yourself and it's your personal decision that you feel comfortable with, you don't need to defend it. I added in the not enjoying in there because I, that's part of it with me. I was a not, I was having sex with men and not enjoying it because I'm asexual leading, okay? And if I was not enjoying it, why was I doing it? And that's what I'm saying to you young ladies. When you go, you might say, well, we got kidnapped. Okay, that's the reason I'm going to lay some ground rules. An important thing to learn when it comes to relationships is you don't owe the world anything. You certainly don't owe the world an apology for the sins of your parents or for being a Jesuit or the sins of the Jesuits, okay? You can just be unapologetically you and do life the way that makes you happy. That's how you heal. And that's how you truly give to other people because you give them your real self. You also don't sell yourself short by thinking that you're only worth what you can give or to what degree you can please others. Bottom line, if you don't really want to go to the sex party, just say, I'm not interested. Okay? Now here's where I'm going to... Um... Okay, so when you are true to yourself, and you set healthy boundaries. You heal the emptiness in your soul that needs energy from others to be filled. This is what Lakshmi said. Like I said, I'm becoming a bit of a Hindu, so I agree with her. Instead, you naturally become so full and complete that your mere presence heals others. I will say this, it can be difficult to know who we are as a sexual person, especially if the group around us tries to pressure us to be a certain way when that's not who we are. But nobody should feel like they can't be true to who they are. Now here's what I suggest um, so that we're going to have a healthy, we need to have some healthy boundaries around these sex parties, okay? Um, number one, everyone who goes to these sex parties needs to understand this is a sex party, okay? Two, um, you need to go to my website to see what I said for two. Number three, no brain control or interference with free will. Four, no kidnapping. I, I was told by 13 that, that part of the Jesuit ritual is they kidnap people and bring them to the sex party. And I think they do some other things. They, it's part of their thrill. And for a hypersexual, I guess that would be exciting. To me, it would be boring as hell, okay? But everybody's different. So, yeah, no kidnapping. Five, if someone wants to opt out, give them 10 minutes to get out. It's possible there's somebody who thought they would enjoy the sex party. Then they show up and they realize, I don't think I really like this. Give them 10 minutes to leave. Okay? Those are the rules. I also recommend that P. Diddy or anyone who sponsors a Jesuit sex party receive training from ex-Jesuit Zach Knight who's been meeting with goddess Lakshmi, so he's pretty intelligent about a lot of stuff, about how to conduct such a party with sensitivity for all involved. Okay? Um, yeah. But I don't think P. Diddy should be punished for being true to his culture and his, and his blackness, okay? He's behaving like he's, he's just being a black and a Jesuit, okay? This is part of their culture. That's how they operate in the sexual sphere. Um, if you're not, I'm not saying that every black is this way or every Jesuit is this way, and this is where I think we need to be careful. Um, so yeah, um, ask yourself, could I be asexual? You say, how would I know? Sometimes it's hard to know. Um, I know for me, sometimes I just think sex is boring. And like with my husband, Brent, I actually, if I wasn't married to Brent, because he's, believe me, he is a full sexual. <laughs> and I, it works out for me because I don't have to worry about getting erections or anything because I'm female, and I just offer him my vagina and we're good to go. And I, I feel like his penis inside me is cuddling me, so I can live with it. But if I was a guy and I had asexual leanings, it could be a problem if I had a partner who was a full sexual. So 
I'm just saying if you if there are times in your life when you think sex is boring, it's nothing to be ashamed of. If you prefer your relationships to be more friendship like and you like and you value maybe you value connection more than you do the sex, you may have asexual tendencies. Bottom line is, you don't need to be ashamed of who you are. Or maybe you're monogamous. Now, I'm not monogamous, but uh, Brent tells me that once he became committed to me, he doesn't have eyes for anyone else. I am the one woman in his life. He's not even tempted to have sex with anyone else. So Now, if you're like that, then you may be monogamous. And for that reason, you may find sex parties very offensive. You feel like you're violating your monogamy because you don't really want to be here, and so you're, you're going to be really mad. In fact, it might be monogamous people who are bringing the lawsuits. Yeah, so this is where Jesuits, you need to be sensitive to different sexual types. Make sure, I think you might want to screen all the people at the party, and if they're monogamous or asexual leaning, um, you may not want to let them come to a sex party. Yeah, you, you might want to create a screen, a scan, to determine if everybody in that party is polyamorous, okay? And, and all, or maybe just determine if they're comfortable being there. Yeah, you might want to set up a scan to determine if everyone's comfortable with, with the sex party. And if, you're, and if, this, and if you're sensing that somebody's not comfortable, then go to them and say, would you like to leave? we're sensing on the scan that you're not comfortable being here. And I think that would solve the problem. Yeah. I think it would solve the problem. But I don't think you should sue P. Diddy. He was, a, he's obviously operating under the false assumption that everybody was comfortable with being there because that's how they assume Jesuits are, just like evangelical Christians for eons have assumed that everybody's supposed to be monogamous, right? It is not correct. There are different types. So yeah, I think maybe you should set up scans at all these parties, scanners that determine if anybody's getting uncomfortable. And if they are, uh, uh, this, it would be like a red flag and we would go to them and say, we're sensing you're getting uncomfortable, would you like to leave? Yeah. And if you can catch that early before they, before their vagina, you know, if somebody's uncomfortable, they're not going to be enjoying any of the sex there anyways. Like if I was an asexual leaning person and I was at this party, I would probably have a dry vagina through the whole thing, okay? Because I wouldn't be getting turned on by it because I'm asexual leaning, right? And my, my vagina would probably be raw and sore after the whole thing's over and it would have been like torment for me. <laughs> you see? And if I was a Jesuit and I was asexual leaning, um, I would appreciate it if somebody came up to me and said, we are sensing you're uncomfortable. Would you like to leave? Then I probably would have said, yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Another thing. Yeah, so I don't want any kidnapping taking place. Um, unless the kidnapping was like arranged. No, no kidnapping, no kidnapping. This needs to be totally consensual, okay? And you probably need to set up scanners to determine the comfort level of everybody there. But no, I do not think P. Diddy should be sued. Because I didn't, as the Jesuit leader, I never really set down clear standards for things like sex parties. So he operated under the false assumption that every Jesuit is a hypersexual and that they're all comfortable with that label. I don't think that is correct. So... Yeah, we probably should set up scanners to assess the comfort level of everybody there, and this, that'll solve this problem. Okay? That's what I think we should do. Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and update my web page and mention that. Um, I think we may be dealing with some monogamous or asexual or asexual-leaning Jesuits. Okay? And they just don't have the courage to be true to who they are. They're afraid they're going to be stigmatized. Just like I, as an evangelical Christian, didn't have the courage to be true to my polyamory, okay? You know, every group that we align ourselves with that gives us certain expectations and we feel obligated 
to fit into their categories. And it's not healthy. It's not healthy. But yes, please pardon P. Diddy. I asked my husband, Brent, who's the president, to do so because apparently we had some big communication problems. But he's not a criminal. He's just a black guy being true to being black and a Jesuit being true to being a Jesuit. Okay? So I think we can solve this problem by um, setting up scanners to assess everybody's comfort level. And another thing, Jesuits, if you are a monogamous Jesuit, or if you are an asexual leaning Jesuit, you should own it. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Look at the beautiful goddess Lakshmi, she's monogamous. Do you look down on her for being monogamous? And she would never, ever go to a Jesuit sex party. I can assure you of that. And would you think any the less of her because of it? So you shouldn't think the less of yourself. If you really don't want to be there, just say this isn't, tell your fellow Jesuits this isn't who I am and this isn't what I want to do. Please respect this. And that's it. Namaste. The divinity in me salutes the divinity in you. Battles and drums.